Good afternoon, everyone. Glenn Murdoch from the Life Coaching College. Lovely to have you all on the call. And before we get started, I'll just have a really quick sound check. Can everyone on the call hear me? If you could just pop in a really quick yes into your question box, that'd be great, just so that we know we're good. Yeah, lovely. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, good to see you as well. All right, let's get started. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to have a look at what it takes to be a wonderful coach. Uh, I've advertised this class as 15 tips. I'm actually going to give you about 20, as it turns out. And what I really want to do is I want to help you to really get an understanding of what it takes to be a great coach, the things that are key to be a wonderful coach. So that's really what we're going to do today and um, really trust you're going to enjoy the class and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to, to showing you some cool stuff. So let's have a look first of, all, first of all and before we even begin anything else, I want to give you a really quick idea about what coaches do, uh, what coaching looks like around the world. So there are about 30,000 coaches worldwide. In Australia, there are about 2,000 that are registered and actively working. 69% of those coaches are female, obviously 31% are male. And 71% um, of those coaches are members of the International Coaching Federation, okay, the ICF. The average coach in Australia earns about 66 grand a year. The average coaching fee per hour is about $300. The average number of clients a coach is working with at any given time is 11. The average hours a coach works are about 13. Uh, we are a lazy bunch, I guess, the, uh, the coaches. The average hours um, per week, uh, yeah, 13. And face-to-face -face coaching normally is about 54% of the time. Telephone coaching about 42%. And uh, the other 4% is made up of, uh, of email coaching. So there's a really quick indication of what happens with coaching in Australia at the moment, just to, uh, just to help you out with that, okay? Um, the figures that you're looking at, they're from the ICF Global Survey. Uh, the latest ICF Global Survey. Um, the primary goal of that survey was to engage with as many coaches as possible. Um, to let you know, 12,000 coaches worldwide did that survey. And um, important also to note that about 80% of coaches receive coach-specific training that is ICF coach-specific training qualified. So uh, there's a little bit of an idea of coaching just before we move along because a few people have asked for that previously. All right. I'm going to go through now what it takes for you to be a great coach. And you can see we've got a couple of slides, about nine things on each slide, and I'm going to give you some definitions around these. And I would imagine that you are probably going to want to write these down. Okay, so number one, you've got to know your purpose. Okay, what are you passionate about? What excites you? What are the, th what are the things that you're here on this planet to do? And when you know your purpose, then it can help you to be able to live that purpose every day. Guys, I've got to tell you, by the way, my purpose is easy. My purpose for being here is to live, to love, to give, and to grow. That's my purpose. And so every day, I make decisions based on, am I meeting my purpose? Am I living, loving, giving, growing? And if I am, I do the thing. If I'm not, then I don't. Um, Welcome to uh, to Kath and to Shane, I can see on the call, to Joanne, I can see on the call, good to have you guys here. All right, number two, and remember, please write these down. Say yes and then work out how. You always are going to have those positions in your life when you meet a fork in the road, where there are two different pathways. And when you get those forks in the road, 
you've got to make a decision to take the road that is the one less travelled. And what I mean by that is embrace uncertainty. Take the road that you didn't think that you would take. When you get to those pathways where you're not sure, get excited about not knowing which way to go. If you have an opportunity, say yes to that opportunity and then work out how to make it happen. Okay, It's just so important to start to adapt this as a philosophy, as a way of being in your life. Great things happen when you say yes. Nothing changes when you say no. All right. Uh, number three, super important. Never be the pack. Okay. Never be the pack. When people are zigging, you want to zagging. You want to be zagging. If you want to build a great coaching business, guys, I've got to tell you the way that you will do that is by being a zigger when others are zagging or being a zagger when others are zigging. Okay, super important. Um, to build a great coaching business, to build success in anything in life, you've got to do something a little different. Um, let me give you some examples. When we first, uh, you know, when I first started this coaching school way back at the start, um, and some of you may not know, our original school was a school called Quick Coach. And what we wanted to do was provide something no one else was doing. We wanted the quickest possible coaching program. Uh, by the way, Quick Coach is still around. Then we made some decisions. Okay, well, there are some coaching schools out there that kind of, um, you know, that, that, that will, I guess, will constantly add on different things to their programs. And then right at the end, we'll, we'll on-sell extra things. I decided I'm not doing that. We decided to create a program that was called the Advanced Diploma that literally had everything. We decided that at our diploma level, we would make that diploma level everything that you need to be a really wonderful one-on-one -on -one coach. We'd add in a website. No one else was doing that. We'd add in NLP at every level. No one else was doing that. So why all the other coaching schools were zigging, we started zagging, yeah? Number four, be a great manager of self. What do you do when others are not watching? Because what you do when no one's watching is what will determine your life. As we talk about this class right now, there's a program on um, TV called Big Brother. And the thing I find fascinating about Big Brother is the behavior of people when they know that someone is always watching. So what do you do? Yeah, what do you do when no one is watching? Do you sit on the couch or do you get motivated? What do you eat when no one is watching? Do you eat chocolate? Do you snack on food that doesn't nurture and nourish and support your body? Or do you, uh, or do, you do the right thing? Do you do the thing that helps your body become energetic every day? One of the examples I like to use is the example of the dog owner. Yeah, You know, the dog owner walking along. Do, 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 do. Are you the kind of dog owner that when their dog stops and does what a dog does, are you the kind of dog owner that stops and picks up after your dog? Or are you the kind of dog owner that looks left and right to see who's watching and if no one's watching, walk on by? Guys, I've got to tell you, these decisions that you make every day, these are the decisions that affect your outcomes. So what kind of manager are you? To be a wonderful coach, to have a wonderful coaching business, you've got to be a wonderful manager of self. You've got to do what needs to get done, regardless of whether people are around or not. Let me ask you this question. <coughs> Excuse me. What's your purpose? What's your purpose for being here? Because if your purpose is to live, to love, to give and to grow like mine, if it's to help people be the best version of themselves, if it's to be passionate and energetic and be a leader, well, sitting on the couch isn't going to cut it. Yeah, 
watching crappy TV isn't going to cut it. So being a great manager of self, what's your purpose? Are you meeting your purpose? Number five, and I love this one. Stop working on your weaknesses. Stop working on your weaknesses. Guys, start working on your strengths. Do you remember school? I remember school, you know, when you'd get a report card and come home. Um, and it might say, Glenn was really good at maths. Glenn was really great at English. Glenn was great at telling stories, but he sucked at art. And your parents would say, well, you've got to work a little harder in art. I say no. I think that's crap. What I want you to do is start putting your attention into your strengths. Start further developing a gap between you and everyone else with your strengths. Because I've got to tell you, people will pay you to close the gap. Okay, people will pay you to close the gap. That's what people pay for. People pay for the gap between where they are and where you are or you will take them. Listen to what people say. Listen for your strengths. This is what happened with me, by the way. I used to have people saying to me, Glenn, you're wonderful at talking. You're wonderful at speaking. We love how you tell a story. They'd invite me to come along to present or, or MC weddings and do birthday speeches, even if I wasn't that close to them. And I started to think, wow, okay, um, maybe this is my thing. Maybe presenting is my thing. Maybe teaching is my thing. That was how it really developed for me as a coach, and I mean as a coach in sport and initially with skills and then as a coach mentally and then to run the school. Guys, I've I got to tell you, it takes courage to do this. It takes courage to do this, to, to see that thing that you're great at and really have a crack and dedicate yourself to being an expert at it. It takes courage to do that, to shine. Is this making sense? Is it useful? Just let me check in. Is this making sense for you, finding this useful? I'll just check in. Just write an answer for me in the text box and I'll grab a quick drink of water. Cool. Okay. Glad you guys are enjoying it. All right, let's press on. Number six, and I love this, avoid sob stories. Guys, Avoid sob stories, avoid bitching, because you know what that is? That's the herd mentality. That's zigging when you should be zagging. You want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. People don't pay you to be part of the problem and be, you know, get into the problem with them. People pay when you're the solution. I've got to tell you, when the shit hits the fan, you want to be the one standing up there saying, hey, I've got the answer. All right, I've got the answer. Say, I'm the leader and be the person there to help them out. All right? Um, this is one of the things that I want to, I, I guess I want to really stress upon you. You want to stand there as the, as the person who is different. You want to stand there as the person who won't buy the story. You want to teach everyone in your posse that you're going to have a different conversation. You want to teach people that when they're with you, you're going to elevate the conversation to a level of excellence. You're not going to do woe is me. You're going to do how. How do we make this better? What's great in this situation? Number seven, have a compelling vision. I've got to tell you guys in life, you've either got a vision for where you want to go or you've got fear. So when you have obstacles in your way, get excited. Get super excited. I want you to create this wonderful vision of how you want life to be, how you want your health to be, how you want your relationships to be, how you want your work day to be. In fact, Design this wonderful, brilliant, ideal, average day that you could live every day of your life. Design it, live it, own it, have it. Okay? And when you've got that compelling vision, that compelling future, that gives you a massive why. And when you've got a massive why, the how 
is easy. I'll just say that again. When you've got a massive why, the how is easy. All right, number eight. Hang out with mentors who are ahead of you. If you can't afford to hang out with people that are ahead of you, buy their stuff, buy their CDs, buy their books, buy their downloaded products. Let me ask you a question. If you want to become a better tennis player, who do you practice against? Do you practice against someone who is better than you? Do you practice against someone who's the same as you? Or do you uh, stroke your ego a little bit and practice with someone who's worse than you so that you can beat them? Big question in life, guys. I want you to stop having the thinking, the mentality that the herd have that is, I'm paying um, this person X amount of money for a product. You're not. You're investing in that person's time and you're investing in that person's education. You're investing in what that person has become. And it's the same as you when you've got your coaching business up and running. You're not ever selling $150 as an hour of coaching or $300 as an hour of coaching or $1,000 as an hour of coaching. You're actually not selling that hour. You're selling everything that you have done up until that point to have earned the right to be there for that hour to help that person close the gap. And you're the mentor for them. Okay? So I ask you every day, stretch yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. Find a mentor to have a different conversation with. And when you have that mentor in front of you, don't waste their time. Please, don't waste their time with your story of why you can't. Ask them questions about how you can. Number nine, and this is absolutely 100% goes with number eight. Who do you hang out with right now? And I'll ask you to think about it. Who do you hang out with? Who are the people in your circle right now? And are those people inspiring you to be better than you are right at the minute? Are they asking you to present your compelling future and work towards it? Are they holding you accountable? Or is this person someone who is just keeping you safe? You know, one of the stats that, I've, uh, that I kind of like and I use a lot when I think about building businesses with, with my clients, I, I ask them this question, who are the five closest people in your world? Because guess what? Your income is the average of those closest five people. So who are you hanging out with? Are they keeping you safe emotionally and financially? I got to tell you, when I learnt this, I started looking for other people to expand into my network. People who would help me to create wealth. People who would help me create wonderful relationships. People who would help me have better conversations. Cool, huh? All right, we're halfway through. I'm going to pause and see if we've got any questions on those first nine. And if we don't, We'll move along. I'll open up the next slide and we'll slip into our next nine. So, any questions? Fire them out. Fire them out if there are any questions. And as I wait for those questions to pop up, I'm going to, and I hope you've taken all the notes and you've written down those first nine. By the way, if you wanted to create a 20 ways to have a brilliant life, 20 ways to be successful in business, 20 ways to be an outstanding athlete, you could use all of these. You could use all of these and they'd work perfectly. All right. Number 10, be prepared to get out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone is when you need to get excited. 
This is where you need to really commit to what you're going to learn. When I get uncomfortable, I get super excited and I think, wow, what's the learning here? What am I about to learn? When I was pre-learning all of my personal development stuff, when I got uncomfortable, I used to eat. When I got uncomfortable, I used to go and watch TV. And now I think, wow, here's an opportunity for me to realize what I'm made of. Here's a chance for me to step up and learn something new. Here's an opportunity for me to test how far I've come. That's what happens now when I get outside of my comfort zone. And I encourage you every day, get out of your comfort zone. Do something you don't know. You know the thing I love about coaching? Coaching is out of your comfort zone. You never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to appear. You never know the wonderful challenges your client is going to bring to the table. And you're out of your comfort zone every day. So ask yourself the question, how did I get out of my comfort zone today? Or how will I get out of my comfort zone today? What opportunities will I seek to get out of my comfort zone today? Number 11, know and live your beliefs. And this is just so key. What are your beliefs in life? And are your beliefs serving, supporting you? Have you got a belief around wealth? Have you got a belief around love? Have you got a belief around desire? Have you got a belief around what you can achieve? And do those beliefs support you? Are they nurturing you? Are they helping you to get the thing that you want in life? Or are they holding you back? Are they limiting beliefs? And if they are, you've got to know what they are and you've got to challenge those beliefs. You need beliefs that are serving and supporting and encouraging you guys. It's key. So know what they are and live your belief. If your belief is, I'm enough, my belief is when my back is to the wall, man, I'm going to step up. My belief is that I can do anything. Live that belief daily. Okay, be it. Number 12, never limit yourself to your current reality. Oh my gosh, I love this. When I first got this, it really helped my life to change. Guys, the only reality is who you are becoming. Who you are becoming. It doesn't matter who you are right now, where you are right now. The only reality is who are you becoming? And having the courage to commit to become that person daily. That's all that matters. Okay? So never limit yourself to the current reality. Number 13, commit to completion. Hands down, the number one rule for success. The biggest difference between success and failure in anything is committing to completion. How many people do you know who start something? They start a diet, they start a new job, they start a new career, they start a course, they start a relationship, and they don't complete. When things get tough, they bail. When things get boring, they leave. Commit to completion and you will be successful. And I'm talking committing to completion in everything. When you start the dishes, finish the dishes. When you start a conversation, finish a conversation. When you start cleaning the house, finish cleaning the house. In the morning, before you go to work or before you go out to begin your day, make your bed, put your clothes away, finish what you started, get your room ready for the day. Little things are big things. Okay, so commit to completion. Ask yourself the question, how will I commit to completion today? At the end of your night, how did I commit to completion in every aspect of my life today? Number 14, this is a controversial one. Ready for this one? Guys, forget what you learnt in school. And let me tell you why I believe this is so true. Who learnt to be an entrepreneur in school? Who learnt about personal development in school? And by the way, you guys probably know, and if you don't, here's a little revelation for you. I'm a school teacher back in a past life. That's what I did for a long, long time. 20 years of my life, I was a school teacher. I'm telling you, school was designed to teach you to fit in. 
It was designed to teach you to conform. School was designed to teach you that life is about getting it right. Life isn't about getting it right. Life is about having a crack and falling down and trying again. Life is about finding a different way. What we do as coaches, it's not about what you learn in school. What we do as coaches is having a red hot crack at life. And if something doesn't work, trying a different way. And if that doesn't work, trying a different way. So I'm saying forget some of that stuff you learn in school. Okay. Number 15. Hey, we're cruising through this. I love this. Number 15. Please. And you see there 10,000 hours. I've written that there because I want you to have humility for what you are learning. Okay. The research suggests to us that to become an expert in any endeavor, it takes 10,000 hours. Okay. 10,000 hours. What does that mean? Let's think about what that really means. If you were to begin your coaching journey right now, and you wanted to be an expert according to that rule, you would need to do 20 hours of coaching related work per week for 10 years. And I'll give you two weeks off per year to become an expert. So what do you think when you see that? Some people think, well, I can't do it. Well, that's too hard. That's too hard. I want you to get excited by that and have humility for the journey and know that you don't need to be an expert but you need to commit to excellence every day. Know that tomorrow you'll be better than you were today and the next day you'll be better than you were that day and have humility for what you learn. On my most arrogant, ego-driven day, I'm about 1% of where I want to be in this whole journey of life and I'm excited by that. I'm excited by what I'm learning every day, what I learn about marketing, what I learn about love, what I learn about parenting, what I learn about running a business and being a wonderful manager of that business, what I learn as a coach, what I learn as a dad, yeah, every day. So get excited. What I learn about golf, guys, this is my new thing, right, golf. This is my new thing. What I learn about golf every day. And I get the 10,000 hours, right? I get it. But hey, as I make this uh, class today, I'm only 43, so that's cool. 20 hours a week, 10 years, 53, I'm an expert in golf. <laughs> How cool is that, right? All right. Um, number 16, you're ready for it if it happens to you. Okay, I love this. When I work with athletes, this is one of the things I teach them more than anything. No matter what the circumstance is in the game, you're ready. Nothing will happen in your life that you cannot deal with. Nothing's going to happen on that field that you can't work your way through. You're ready. You're enough. Step up. Do it. Yeah? If it happens to you, you're ready. How powerful is that? You begin your coaching course, you're ready. You get your first client, you're ready. You get your first paying client, you're ready. You run your first workshop, you're ready. Someone dies that's close to you, you're ready. Okay? You break up with your long lost or your, your, your partner of a long time, it's okay. You're ready. If it happens to you, you're ready for it. You will deal. You will deal. There is nothing that you cannot deal with. You are the most incredible person on the planet. And you can deal with it. Haha, <laughs> Kath. Kath has said I'm 62. It might take me to the age of 70 before I have 10,000 hours experience. Kath, it might. And that's okay. That is 100% okay. Might as well get started now. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Number 17, and this is, this is crazy, I, I, I never knew this, I never knew this and when I started coaching this was one of the key moments for me. Guys, coaching is not about solving people's problems. I'm going to tell you three things that are key that I learned in my very first coaching weekend. There's nothing to change, 
There's nothing to fix and there's nothing to forgive. There's nothing to change, there's nothing to fix and there's nothing to forgive. Coaching is about changing the radio station that people are running around with. We're all plugged in, 96.4 Glen FM, right? Coaching's about asking your client, hey, you're getting the results that you want plugged into 96.4 Glen FM, or do we need to just take you to 96.6 Glen FM? I don't know how old you are or how young you are on this call, but I know back in the days, you had a knob and you used to turn the knob and you'd tune in your radio station, right? By the way, you used to tune in television this way as well. <laughs> and you tune it. And this is what happens when I think about my clients sometimes. I think about them, they're at that radio station frequency. It's not quite right. It's kind of, and the news is, and you just, you, you know that if they just tune it in, just that little one or two notches, suddenly the radio station's clear and everything is perfect. And we don't use that term in coaching, by the way, but suddenly it all makes sense. Suddenly they can see the forest through the trees, okay? So to me, that's another little layer on top of this. Yeah, coaching not about solving people's problems, nothing to change, nothing to fix, nothing to forgive. Just change the station. Number 18, one of the keys for life, for life. By the way, do you get, these are the 20 biggest tips I have come across working with thousands of coaches and athletes and business entrepreneurs. These are the big ones. These are it. Yeah, if you did all of these, you're going to be amazing. Number 18, just be present, guys. And the gift I have every day of these two words, be present, are as a dad. To just be present to my children. If I've got an hour with them, be present in that one hour with them. If I've got an hour with my beautiful wife, Beth, be present to the hour with her. If I'm playing golf, be present to my game of golf. If I'm hanging out with my mates, be present to that. We've got such busy lives and we're, we're torn in this direction and that direction and up and down and sideways. I just want everyone just to stop and give that one thing that you're in at that time, give that 100% presence. Forget multitasking, it's a myth. 100% to the one task at one time. That's my gift in the be present moment, okay? And let me ask you the question, how, how do you think this class would be if I wasn't being present to you guys? if I wasn't being present to the content, if I wasn't being present to who I need to be right now to deliver this at 100%, if I was thinking about other things, it, it wouldn't be what it is. It has to be 100% for me in each of the things I do. At that given time, everything else gets compartmentalized and I deal with it when I need to deal, okay? Number 19, show up. Sometimes magic happens by just showing up. Let me tell you a really quick story. I got a job in England as a, it doesn't matter what it was, but teaching, right? Got a wonderful job in England. And I, um, uh, the interview process in England a little different than it is here in Australia. In England, it was a two-day process. I had to teach on the first day with a range of interviews, come back the next day, and um, then we taught again and had another range of interviews. Anyway, I got this job. About a month or two later, I was talking to my principal and I, and I asked him, you know, I, I'm curious, how did you choose? Tell me about the process. What happened? And I was fishing, right? My ego, fishing. Tell me why I'm great, really, is what I was saying. <laughs> I look back now and laugh, but that's really what it was. And he said to me in this deep English accent that I won't, um, that, that I won't um, copy for you, he said, Glenn, on the first day, we had five people in mind. And they were the five short-placed candidates, and you all came in. And then we we nailed that down to three for the second day. 
And on that second day of interviews, of those three, one of them accepted another job, one of them didn't come back, and you were the third. And, and you, can, you can just imagine me melting into the carpet and my ego going, no, as he's telling me this. But it taught me a wonderful lesson. Sometimes magic happens by just showing up, just being there. So when you, when you turn up and you've got one person in front of you and you're presenting, be there, show up and give everything because that one person, that one person might refer you to a hundred clients. That one person might be the CEO of a company that, that they want you to be their business coach for the next 10 years. That one person might end up being your husband or wife <laughs> or best friend forever. Number 20, to finish off. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question because this is the thing that I have with potential coaches and clients and athletes more than anything. They wonder whether they're worthy. Unconsciously, they're asking themselves, am I enough? Do I deserve this? And I want to ask you one question. If you don't deserve this opportunity, you show me the person who deserves it more than you. If you don't deserve to shine, you show me the person who deserves to shine more than you. If you don't deserve success, you show me the person who deserves it more than you do. You show me the person who deserves to be a successful coach more than you. You show me the person who deserves happiness more than you. You show me the person who deserves to live the life of their dreams more than you. Show me that person because that person does not exist. You deserve everything. You deserve everything that you want and you are only two things away from having everything that you want. Time and action. They're the two things, guys. They're the two things. All right. Hey, I want to I want to draw a conclusion to the official content for this class. Okay. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for coming along. I trust you enjoyed it. Gee whiz, if you if you adopted every one of those twenty strategies in your life today, no matter where you have your life, whether it's being a coach. Or, or in another aspect of your life, if you adopted every one of those and embraced them at your core, gee whiz, you would have a fantastic life. I will stop and answer any questions that you've got. Happy to hang around and, and, and really go through anything that you want me to go through, through the programs, how we work, what we do. Happy to do that for you. If you are here for the content alone or if you're listening to this as a recording, thanks for coming along. Um, you won't get any of the special offers that I am about to uh, go through, but uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, I will officially stop the recording now and I'll stay on live for all the people here on the class and uh, I'll help you guys out.